ready for this? Hey guys, this is Jovan Buha of Clipper Blog. I'm here at USC with Clipper Daryl. A lot of people know the, the story of how you became a Clipper fan. We'll go over that in a second, but how did you originally get into basketball? I was just sitting down watching TV, when, you know, watching the games with my father, you know, when Denver Nuggets and the Golden State Warriors used to play, you know, to uh, run TMC. And, you know, when, when the basketball score used to be 136 to 125, you know, up and down, you know, fast-paced basketball, you know. Did you play basketball growing up? No, man. If you see me play basketball, you laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's your favorite player? You know what? I don't have a favorite player. I just, you know, I just like the game itself. You know, I've been a, I've been a uh, Clipper fan for a long time, but there's no favorites. You know, as long as you put on that red, white, and blue uniform, you're definitely my guy. So how did you get into liking the Clippers? I got fired from a job, and a guy told me I never amount to anything in life. So you know how you go home, you feel sorry for yourself, popped on the couch, turn the TV on. The game comes on. They said the same thing about, about them. How horrible the ownership was, how this team would never amount to anything. I said, this is going to be my team. We're going to ride and die together. What made you take your, your passion to the next level? Because obviously there's passionate fans in sports, but you've taken it to a whole nother level. I mean, I just feel, you know, I just go with my heart. I was just having fun at a game. And uh, a song came on by, by uh, Two Unlimited, Are You Ready For This? And I just started dancing. And people, the crowd went crazy. They played me black in slow motion, and the crowd went crazy. And the next game, it happened. The same song comes on, they put the camera on me, I'm dancing, the crowd loves it. And it went on from there, you know? And I, I just have fun, uh, you know? What I do is just fun, man. I just like to keep the, keep the guy, people, keep the crowd into the games. You were originally known as Dancing Man. How did it change from Dancing Man to Clipper Daryl? Because my bo uh, buddy of mine, uh, actually, you know, I, I call him a buddy of mine now because we are friends, Dave Smith. He used to work for 1540 to ticket. Um, I was, that's when Jeannie Buss and them used to go over to, uh, to that restaurant. I, f I forgot the name of the restaurant right over there, Palms. He used to go over to the Palms, and I used to go over there. And they said, man, I'm tired of calling you Dancing Man. We need to get you a name. So him and his producer, Corn uh, Corndog, and uh, they came up with Clipper Durham, and, and I rode with that. What was your reasoning behind the suit, the car? Uh, in 05, 06, um, okay, that's when we acquired uh, Sam Cassell. I originally got a Sam Cassell jersey. I was putting it all together, half and half, and you know, just going with the Sam look. But the NBA came out with the new, new rule stating that the players can no longer wear jerseys on the bench. They have to dress in suits. I said, suits? I said, if the players got to do it, why not the fans? So I went downtown, bought me two suits, two shirts, two vests, two ties, two everything, and told the tailor to cut them in half. I know he thought I was crazy, but he did it, and that's how I came up with the, uh, with the suits. How often have you had to change the suits? Is it the same two original ones? Uh, yes. Same two? Oh, no. I got I me, mean, you know, I mean, this is this, this going into my fifth season of, of, of the suits. So I've had one, two, three, two, three sets of suits already. Three sets? Yeah. So right now we're missed the lockout. Obviously, this is very frustrating for basketball fans. What's your what's your take on the lockout? What's your feeling about it? I mean, I feel they could come to a happy medium. I, I feel they can, uh, you know, the thing the thing that really bothers me about the situation is the fans hurting. I mean, we as fans are the ones that's hurting. Then, second of all, you got to look at the people that in the arena. You know, the ushers that I see every day. You know. Uh, the red, the red coats, you know, um, people over there at the restaurants. Those are the people that's really gonna hurt because there's no NBA season. People's gonna get laid off, and there's gonna be no jobs. If you think about it, if Blake Griffin doesn't play this season because there is no season, he'll have missed two of his first three seasons. What, what do you think? What do you make of that? I mean, we finally, we finally get a superstar as being a Clipper fan. We finally get the superstar that we need, and now there's a lockout. I mean, this hurts more than any any year of being a Clipper fan, ever. Heading into either this season or next season, what do you make of the Clippers roster and the team? I mean, do you think they can make the playoffs? What should they be looking for in free agency? Uh, I love it. I love I love to see Tyshawn Prince be an addition at, at the three with, uh, along, you know, with uh, alongside of uh, Blake Griffin, you know, DeAndre Jordan, Eric Gordon, you know, and you know, I could see, I could see us making the playoffs and I, and I, and I could see us finishing, you know, a good you know, fifth, fourth seed in the playoffs. People thinking that, you know, these these this Clipper team, 
is is, is going to be a surprise to everybody. So y'all better watch out. Do you think Blake has what it takes to be the best player in the NBA? Yes, he does. What Blake, do you think? Blake, Blake the Great. <laughs> Blake, Blake has the charisma, the attitude, and the endurance to to be the best player, definitely in the NBA. What do you think he has to improve on? His shooting ability. He he, he, he got to get that 14, 15 footer. What about defensively? Defensive, definitely defensively. That's where he's lacking at. You know, offensively he's okay. Defensively he has to be on the, on the ball. Has to has to make sure he's there. 2012 draft. It may be a little tricky if there is no season how they determine it. But who, who you know? Do you have any a position in particular, or maybe a player in particular you'd like the Clippers to try and go after? You know what? Right now I'm gonna worry about 2011. Okay. Let's get this season going. Then when the draft comes next year, as if we need the draft, because I was so happy that they traded the pick, and we didn't, we wasn't worried about being in the draft this year, and we just, we, you know, we're gonna build around what we have. It, it showed me that this organization is taking this this team to the next step. So, are you a DJ supporter, or a Cayman supporter? Do you think? I mean, do you think we can keep both and moving forward, or are they gonna? You think the Clippers are gonna have to pick between them? I mean, I, I like both of them. Both guys are real, real good guys. They're classic, you know, classic guys. But the thing is, I, I feel uh, Cayman has a different game than DeAndre. DeAndre has a different game than Cayman. You know, I don't see that why they can't work together. I see they don't have to pick and choose. Uh, Cayman's more of a shooter. You know, he's more of a shooter type of center. You know, so if Blake gets in trouble, you can kick it out to uh, uh, Cayman. DeAndre, DeAndre is more of a rebounder, you know. The, uh, you know, the, uh, coming off the coming off the uh, rebound and, and dunking type of guy. So, you know, they complement. They comp They're two different type of players. And I, I, I would love to see both of them here next year, next season. So, if if there's one thing that's going to stop the Clippers from succeeding uh, next season, what do you think that could be? Injuries. Just injury. Okay. Yes. Injuries. Mm -hmm. Now, October first, you've been saying some stuff on your Twitter. <laughs> Like to announce it here, what what's going on October first? October first, I will officially be sleeping at. If, if, the, if the lockout has not been agreed to, I will be officially sleeping at Staples Center. I love this game. I love this game. I will turn. You know, I'm addicted to this game. If you want to say, but if there's no NBA, I will sleep. I'm going to be sleeping at Staples Center until this lockout ends. Until the lockout ends until in front of Stable Center. I would not leave Stable Center until the lockout ends. Okay. You want to plug your Facebook, Twitter right now? Facebook me, Clipper Duro fan page, two R's, two L's, Clipper Duro, C I L C L I P P E R D A R R E L L. Twitter me. I hit you back. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Clipper Duro. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate you.